So, Bill, Vietnam has had its various bumps along the road mm -hmm. in terms of its economy and stock market for mm -hmm. several years now. Uh, is anything different? Is it better? Well, I think the government has learned some very hard lessons about macro policy. Um, since we had the uh, boom-bust episode in, in uh, 05 to 09, um, they've moved to institute a uh, policy of growth with stability. So you've seen how more sensible monetary management by the central bank uh, has whipped inflation from about 30% at its peak to 4% now, stabilized the currency for three years in a row to around 21,200. Um, and uh, that's dovetailed very nicely with exports motoring on the back of uh, all of Vietnam's incredible FDI attraction. So now we have a trade surplus, a modest trade surplus. It'll be about a one or two billion this year, maybe a billion next year. Um, and we have uh, booming FX reserves on the back of that, say 40 billion by the end of this year. So the economy uh, is in very nice shape and that is certainly one thing which has changed over the past few years. The Vietnam index is up somewhat this year. How can investors prosper from this more healthy economy? The index has been pretty bouncy this year. We started at around 500. Uh, we got as high as 640 um, in the first few months of the year. And now Vietnam has come down to some extent in line with, uh, with the, the rest of the world on growth concerns, oil price concerns, and so on. Uh, but I think the outlook is good. Um, I think that as the domestic economy starts to fire along with the export economy, we can move back to uh, the 7% the plus GDP growth that we were more accustomed to um, uh, a few years ago. And the way to profit from this uh, is that you can go direct uh, and buy stocks uh, on your own through brokers in Vietnam if you want to go through all the palaver of setting up uh, a brokerage account. Um, but I personally think it's much easier to buy uh, country funds uh, where the stocks are all there. Uh, they're being managed uh, in most cases for index plus performance and it's just kind of uh, a no-brainer, easy way of getting quick exposure to Vietnam. The banks and the property sector are a significant part of the economy mm -hmm. there. Uh, they are still struggling to, to get to a firm footing. Does that mean that that part of the Vietnam investment component is going to be sluggish? For a while, I think that's a fair comment. Um, of course, the bank, the fate of the banks and the property companies are intertwined. The property sector is certainly bottom now. Um, we can see that prices for good projects in good locations from good developers are definitely going up. Um, we've seen prices bottoming in the stock market, various small developers that are listed and for some of the big names as well. Uh, so I, I think we've certainly seen the worst of that in terms of, you know, the, the, the property bank nexus. Um, as the property sector continues to bottom and then recover, and as banks get a bigger, um, um, a better handle on their NPLs, uh, which have come down a lot from where they were in terms of the loan books, about 18, 19 percent. Uh, These are non-performing non loans. The NPLs, non-performing loans. Uh, they used to be, call it 18 to 20 percent of loan books. Probably now they're 13 or 14 percent. Uh, deleveraging is over, if only because there has been some credit growth, you know, five, six, seven percent per annum over the past few years, and there's been economic growth. So, so uh, non-performing loans are less than they were. The banks are that much less risk averse. Uh, right now, the banks are rated fairly cheaply, generally uh, 10 times uh, earnings, one times book. Maybe we'll start to see earnings growth in 2015, definitely in 2016. Uh, so the banks look interesting um, uh, as, as, as a long-term hold to, to build positions in now. You mentioned the strong export growth from Vietnam. Now, much of that's occurring from uh, production by multinationals, the technology industry, the Korean electronics industry, uh, major electronics makers and such. Is there a way to gain as an investor from that part of the Korean story, or Un the uh, Vietnam story? Well, that's part of the Korean story, yes, too. Yes, it is. But, um, uh, unfortunately, no. Um, the export sector isn't really listed on the stock market, except uh, uh, some fishery companies and some, some rubber companies. And there are a few big manufacturers that export. Um, there is a sheet steel manufacturer that exports. It's called Hwasen Group. I think about 35 or 40 percent of its sales are exports. Um, but, but generally, the, the, the export growth that Vietnam is famous for, right, is mostly on the back of FDI. Um, and then there's a lot of SMEs participating uh, 
in, in the export story, but they're not listed. And right now, they're kind of struggling because they exist on domestic credit growth. Right? So the export thing um, is not something investors can typically get at through the stock market. But of course, the export story uh, is doing a lot for employment and, and consumption. So at least the stock market is reflecting that dynamic to some extent. Privatization of the state enterprises by some name or another mm -hmm. is a big part of the investment opportunity in Vietnam for outside uh, third-party investors, isn't that right? Yes, but it's, uh, it's something that's, um, that, that, that's waiting to happen. Uh, it, it is certainly now underway, uh, much more promisingly than when they first tried privatization out in 06, 07, 08. Uh, we've had some interesting deals this year. There's more to come in 2015. Um, it's happening slowly but surely. Um, but we're at the beginning of a process now on, on privatization. Uh, many of the companies that have privatized, uh, you know, here and there over the past few years in Vietnam, um, have actually become better listed companies as a result. Even when they've only listed five or six percent of stock, um, the pressure from shareholders, the transparency that they are uh, required to, um, to produce has made them better listed companies. Uh, so I think there's going to be a healthy process over time, um, even though it's probably going to start in, 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 a, in a gradual way rather than with a bang. Put Vietnam in the context of, a, of an investment for someone, some party considering Asia or Southeast Asia. Is it, is it an investment instead of some alternative or as a complement to others? How would, you, how would you pitch Vietnam as that investment? I, I would see it as an important way of diversifying your holdings in Southeast Asia. Vietnam's a coming market. It's still only about 35% of GDP, but privatizations, a move to list OTC stocks, uh, is definitely going to make it a more important market. And you know the macro structure is so good now. Um, earnings growth will start to fire next year. So it, it, it's got to be an increasingly important part of um, diversified Southeast Asian portfolios. I think that it's an interesting investment in its own right. Uh, but most of our clients that we talk to, um, uh, big institutions, family offices, tend to think in terms of diversification. Um, and uh, I, we're very happy to you know, look at Vietnam from that perspective as well. Does that mean as an alternative to China? It wouldn't be an alternative to China except uh, in, in, in smaller portfolios. In institutional portfolios, in large family office portfolios, you know, China is an asset class in its own right. And then you have Southeast Asia and Vietnam would be part of that. How about Vietnam's relationship economically at least with the United States? What is the growth trajectory of that as you see it? Well, exports to uh, the U.S. Uh, are very important. Um, they're about $25 billion per annum uh, in an export uh, sector that uh, is, I think, $180 billion, um, kind of co-equal with the EU, right? Um, so uh, it, th those two um, countries or regions are, are, are the key export partners of Vietnam. It's very important. Um, and both of them, in fact, are going to pick up when they have uh, free trade agreements being signed. Um, the EU FTA, EU Free Trade Agreement, with Vietnam will probably come through later this year or early next. And then, of course, the Trans-Pacific Partnership um, will bring more Vietnamese exports into the United States. Uh, the interesting thing about TPP um, is all that has to happen is for China to be displaced a little bit, right? Lose a half percent in this sector, a half percent in that sector of market share in the U.S. Um, and it's tiny for China, but it would be huge for Vietnam, particularly in an area like textiles, where that, where that kind of uh, uh, a trend could see textile exports go up, you know, 40 percent over a three or four year period. Uh, so I think actually on the back of that, um, by 2016, 2017, the U.S. will probably pull ahead of the EU. As, as, the, as the number one trading partner of Vietnam. The big if there is, if there is a trans-Pacific partnership. Right, but e even if it doesn't happen, exports will continue to, to rise to the United States because you know, Vietnam is just super competitive in, uh, in, in consumer and basic industrial goods now. Textile garments, footwear, cell phones, furniture, um, leather goods, etc.
So it's going to it's going to keep going, but it would certainly get that um, that extra boost from TPP being signed. And then, of course, um, uh, there's the uh, increasingly important strategic relationship. Uh, the geopolitical one between um, the United States and Vietnam that is taking place as Chinese power grows.